What's up guys? In today's video I'll be installing this Premier ERV. It's made for single rooms. You can have intakes off the side or the back. Same with uh, the fresh air supply. So anyway, go ahead and check it out. Today I'm going to be unboxing and installing this Pioneer wall mounted ERV or energy recovery ventilator. It's for a single room. It's pretty efficient and uh, it's this going to be for a small building, just testing it out. So we'll uh, see how this works out. Let's have a look what's inside. Okay, we have the mounting back plate. A couple of tubes that will be cut down to the depth of the wall. That looks like some kind of air scoop probably will be attached to those. A, uh, that looks to be just cutting off the air from the outside if it's not running. Then we have, don't know what that is yet. Might be a sensor, actually that is a remote. And then we got some seals. On this side we have a boot, which looks to make it more weatherproof. All right, now to get this out, I'll just be inverting it. Some kind of soft material with an adhesive backing. Take that off. One more. We're gonna rip the plastic. I think I have it upside down. Yeah, have it upside down. Take it out, flip it around. Okay, so that's what the unit looks like. Pretty nice. So it looks like we have the air probably coming in and out of the back here. And then I'm guessing it's going to go uh, out into the room. Let's see here, EA outlet from side or back. And here, inlet from side or back. Okay, so it's going to be using that one and that one or that one and that one. I've looked over the installation manual. You can install it either with side inlet and outlet or back inlet and outlet or a combination thereof. I'm going to go ahead and use the back. Now it does recommend that you install it, what was it, four feet from the floor? No, five, a ventilator bottom to the floor should be five feet. So I won't be able to do that, but I will be able to do this one foot from the right or left side. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a location for it, then mount some uh, mounting blocks for where these tubes are going to come through. And uh, that will be it for now until I get interior walls on there. The floor space of this building is 12 foot this way and 8 foot that way. I want the, this uh, ERV to be installed in the first 4 feet. So I marked out 4 feet here. That's a mark right there. And one up above. And we'll just put a level in there. So somewhere in this area, on this side is where I want to put it. If I go fairly high, then the outlets uh, or an the inlet will come up against the inside of my roofing here. I want to give it a little bit of space. So maybe something like that. But I got to now check if those outlets will be on the right side or left side. I'm looking at the Pioneer ERV here and you can see that the outlets and inlet are on the right hand side from the, as, as you see it from the inside. So therefore they're gonna be on the left hand side here on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and so here's the line. I wanna be on this side of that. So why don't we just do, I wanna say something like that. Get, the, get it straight. And then we'll mark out where we're gonna drill. 
and we want to drill at a slight angle down towards the outside so that we don't have uh, any condensation that runs back into the building. Here we go. Those are the places we're gonna go ahead and use our hole saw and cut up. So first thing I'm gonna do is to drill a hole in the middle and angle it up a little bit so that I can see where those holes come out on the inside and then we'll connect in between. Let's start straight, get a bit of an angle. That's one. Get it in the middle, that's straight, angle it up a bit. All right, there we go. Now we have a spot to put our saw and drill through. I got lucky and actually had a four inch hole saw from a different project when I was lighting it on fire to get um, some PVC connections apart. So here we go, we'll put that in here, start it fairly level and then go down with it. Now the hole I drilled was too big, that was not smart. Angle downwards. That cut some of that um, insulation. We'll do the same here. I finished cutting the two holes. Top one actually lined up pretty well. Bottom one shifted off to the side due to the size of the hole I cut. So I'm gonna go and use my jigsaw, move it over just so it'll line up better, and then we'll fill the rest with foam. The next thing to do, now that I have a pretty straight cut through here, is to make the mounting blocks. So it's gonna be again, uh, six by six cedar, two inches deep. I'm making progress. So far I have installed the Sega Myrex 200 behind the whole wall here on the bottom, all the way around. I've also taken the reson tape and taped off uh, any seams or connections. So that's done. Then I put some uh, zip system on the bottom here, a zip panel just to have uh, something a little stronger uh, for the first two feet. And now I'm gonna put some uh, gypsum board right here, she rock. And once that's done, I can install the air handler, or it's gonna be an energy recovery ventilator. Here we are making progress on the ERV. I have drilled a hole through the wall up here and down there, then attached this little adapter to the plate and then shove the whole assembly through. Then on the other side, I marked them. So now if we take this off, we can see that this is the width of the wall. So we'll cut that off. You can see here I made some teeth on that one so I could make the initial hole going from the back um, in this way. So now we'll cut this one, fit it back through again, and then put on some like plushy little um, seals. And there's also this rubber seal right here. Let's get going. Here we are on the outside. So what I've done is I've taken one of these rubber uh, gaskets and shoved it on around here. It was a little hard to get on, so I just used a flathead screwdriver and kind of just pushed it along the edges. Now, I didn't know which one was inlet, which one was outlet. So now I can feel that that's definitely an inlet, that's an outlet. So this one will be getting the grill that will allow to suck inwards. So this one, I believe is out, which means this thing has to be the other one. So we'll put that on here. There you go. Then we'll throw this one on where the air goes out. The ERV is now installed. So I'll show you how it works. Ignore the camera, that's not a part of this. That's for me spying on my chickens. So here you got stale air coming out. Here you have fresh air going in. It goes through filters, you got HEPA filters and all sorts of stuff. And so that is the outside. Now let me show you the inside. Let's get out of the chicken coop or chicken run. Let 
And here we got the inside unit. So when you buy this guy, it comes with one sensor, which is the PM2.5. So that looks for particles in the air. You might be able to see it here. It says CO2 right there. So that's another sensor you can buy. It costs about a hundred bucks. And then you can have it ramp up and down based on your parts per million of CO2 instead. So I have one of those that I will be installing. Uh, however, it's on back order. So as soon as it gets here, I will uh, do a little update. And yeah, you got fresh air being supplied out of the top here. You got stale air going in through the bottom here. And there's a filter on the side. There's a filter inside there. So that is it, boys and girls. Really happy with it so far. It is fairly quiet. And uh, when it ramps up, you can hear I can switch it over to auto or to manual. And go 8, which is the max. Strange scale, but that's it. So you'll hear it now. That is your max, which will be either if it's a lot of particles in the air, or if uh, you have a CO2 sensor, then if the CO2 levels get real high. So let me put that back to manual again, or to auto. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions about it, let me know, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.